Hey everybody, uh, been a while. I have been quietly kind of working on a uh, replacement for my current brewing software, which is Brew Control. Uh, so if you've been a member of this channel for a while, uh, you've definitely seen a lot on Brew Control and a lot of efforts to integrate additional things into Brew Control. Uh, but actually one of the subscribers alerted me to some other technologies that could make that even smoother and easier. And as I got further and further into it, I realized that I kind of just wanted to replace Brew Control entirely because I think this approach is, uh, at least in terms of getting everything in one place and using the least amount of code possible to do it, I think this is kind of, this is a cool approach and I hope you agree. A uh, subscriber alerted me to uh, this application called Node Red, which I was actually completely naive to before. It was brought to my attention and I started looking at it. Um, so what I thought was, well, instead of having like a Windows client that everybody talks to, why doesn't everybody just talk to Node Red flows? So if you're not already familiar with familiar with Node Red, um, it's a you know it's it's a web JavaScript application uh, where you go in and you just you create these graphical flows, which is the logic of how things work, and that basically is both your client and your scripting language kind of rolled into one. Uh, and we'll get into more, of, we'll actually take a look at some examples in, in a bit here. Uh, and then the other piece of this is, okay, well, how do we actually communicate between the central client, Node-RED, and all of our Arduino devices? Well, we can use MQTT, and that makes things uh, very simple. It's, it's this uh, Internet of Things protocol. It has some quality of service guarantees, uh, and that makes messaging between the client and the firmware uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, so the automation strategy here is you just create these flows in Node-RED. Uh, if you need to do something really complex, you could write some JavaScript if you can't express it in a flow. But I think most things are, are pretty expressible just graphically in these, in these flows. Uh, then when it comes to the external interface, well, again, it's just node red flows. Uh, and there's, you know, people have, it, it's quite a popular app. So people have already written a lot of flows that have been published to the node red repositories that you can grab. For example, Brewfather integration. It already exists. You can just grab it. Uh, so that, that's very convenient. Uh, then for user interface, again, it's just nodes in Node-RED that then correlate to user interface elements. And we'll, we'll look at that a bit later. Uh, license, Apache 2. So if you want to use this, it's free, it's open source, whether you're a home brewer or maybe you're commercial nano. Uh, there are no royalties here. So here's kind of a look at the architecture. So we have a node red flow there at the top. And this is something that is published to some central machine. So this could be a Raspberry Pi computer, this could be a Windows PC, this could be a Linux PC, Mac, it could be running in the Azure cloud. Um, this could be pretty much anything. And, and it runs fine on anything down to a, a Raspberry Pi if that's what you want to use. Uh, so, you know, generally the MQTT broker and Node-RED would be running on this central machine. They don't have to, they could be separate machines if you wanted to for, for some reason. And then similar to Brew Control, 
we have our Arduino devices installed on some kind of panel. Uh, you know, you could have separate ones for like the hot side on the left and cold side on the right. And then this firmware can talk to a lot of things out of the box, uh, including things like tilt hydrometers, uh, you know, one wire sensors, PWM, basically most of the things that Brew Control can talk to, my firmware can talk to out of the box as well. Um, and actually some additional things like uh, Atlas Scientific, EZO uh, devices. It can talk to any of those out of the box. So what does this look like when we're running it? So let me, okay. So here is my instance, uh, and this is actually running as we speak out back in my brewery shed. Uh, so, you know, if, if you've been watching other videos of mine, you know, I have a, a pretty traditional three kettle uh, or three vessel type setup, HLT, match ton, and kettle. Uh, and so I have various flows hooked up to uh, buttons here. Uh, so like we've got the heat to strike button, which will fire up the HLT burner and it'll hold a strike temperature until I'm ready to mash in. And then this button will kick off the mash in logic, which is which I have in uh, node red. And then similarly, uh, I've got a step mash logic here. And then I have an inline pH meter and I have like buttons to calibrate it down here. Um, and you know, continuing on, we've got our sparge button, boil button for, for to kick off those flows and that logic. Uh, and then in here, we can see, I think if I hit refresh, it'll probably be blank because I don't have anything in, yeah, I don't currently have anything set to the brewing status in um, Brewfather, but if I did, I'd be able to select it here and all of these mash steps would fill in from uh, Brewfather. And then I've got some manual pump control uh, guys over here. And we can go into cold side, so... Right now I have one beer fermenting in Unitank 1. So I've got like a temp ceiling and temp floor set. Currently uh, the heater and cooling pump are off. I've also got a dissolved O2 meter integrated here. Although it's not currently plugged into the fermenter because I, for this particular beer, I ran out of ports for it. I wanted to plug something else in. So this is just sitting in you know, air right now, and that's about the right value for uh, ambient air. Then we've got our tilt device data coming in here, and this is also being uh, sent up to Brewfather, which can also be done via the node red flows. And then we've got also an interfaces tab that shows my four Arduino devices that I have in my brewery setup. Um, the pH meter and DO meter, those are separated out into separate devices because they had to be when I was running brew control, although now they could actually be integrated into these other devices because my firmware supports them. So that is kind of an example of what can be done, which I think is uh, pretty cool. And this is completely customizable. Uh, so moving over to, so here are my node red flows that generate all of the UI elements that we just looked at. And they also implement all the logic that's kind of, that's attached to those buttons uh, that I want to be able to kick off during my brew day. So like, we have an example of HLT logic here. Um, so like down here is stuff that supports my flow meter logic for being able to measure how much uh, hot liquor I'm mashing in with. Um, we've got the hysteresis module up here to turn the elements on and off uh, to hold a temperature. Um, 
we've got step mash logic over here. I've got logic for for uh, my fly sparge. Uh, this controls both you know two different pumps to get them all kind of equalized and flowing at the same rate. Um, we've got logic for the boil, which kind of it, it turns on and off the like it'll turn on the whirlpool pump at the beginning, turn it off when it hits temp, turn it back on at the end of the boil. Um, you know, there's a boil clock in here that counts down. And also, like, things like the mash steps and the boil clock and all that, they actually grab those values from the Brewfather uh, recipe. So they all auto-populate so the logic can key off of uh, that data. And so, like, speaking of Brewfather, here's a flow that integrates... Uh, with Brewfather, so we like can pull down our batch list. We can get a particular batch, and then we can um, initialize like our step mash steps with those values and pre-populate other things like our uh, mash water volume, our sparge volume. All that stuff can be populated from from that data. Uh, so let's see here's cold side cold side logic i won't go into detail of any of this stuff like i i actually cover this stuff a lot in a video i have for setting up this whole environment so there's more information on you know kind of the details of flows in there and how to get started with these yourself uh, then we have like another flow where uh, like when we looked at that the, that interface tab that showed us what interfaces were connected, this is what is doing that. And uh, this is also responsible for configuring all the individual interfaces. So kind of from there, how do we, you know, how do we actually configure in real time uh, these interfaces? Like how do we tie pins to, to logic? Uh, I think I'll leave that for, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll gloss over it real quick so you can kind of get an idea, but there's more information in the startup quick start video that I've published. Um, but really it comes down to, for each separate Arduino device that you have, you write some uh, JSON. So each one of these little blocks is tying a MQTT message to a pin, and then you got to tell it what type it is. So like here we have our HL HLT pump, which is a DC pump. I have it on general purpose IO pin 4, and we're telling it, okay, this is a PWM pulse width, width modulation device. Um, and then we also have, you know, th this is pretty similar to root control where we have one wire, we have counters, and these are all documented on, on uh, my GitHub page for the project. So you can read that and learn how to set these up. But uh, what happens is when the device comes online, it pings uh, Node Red. It says, hey, I'm the hot side device. And Node Red says, okay, here's your configuration data. And then it knows what to do. It knows what messages to send for like temperature data, and it knows what messages to respond to uh, for you know turning on and off a heater or a pump, whatever. So you can see here, like for instance, we have uh, you know, on the fly sparge, we have outgoing messages to set uh, the power of the pumps. We have incoming uh, MQTT messages like from the flow meter, which is a counter device. And that's, that's, that's how we do it. That, that's how uh, we integrate in Blue Screen Brewery. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, maybe take a look at the quick start video, and that goes into more detail on how to set all this up. Uh, so for setting this up but in a nutshell uh 
you need to install Docker and run a Docker image. And that will get you all set up with Node-RED, MQTT, uh, and some example flows. And here's actually the flows that you'll get started with out of the Docker image. So just some basic stuff. It gives you an example of setting up uh, two interfaces, uh, like hot side and cold side. It provides some examples of a flow meter, um, how to get temperature from you know, various kettles, vessels, uh, controlling temperature on your HLT. It also gives uh, an example of controlling uh, a unitank with a pump and a heater and brew father integration example. So just some basic stuff to get up and running. I didn't want to get too detailed with the example flows because everybody's brewery is different. And so I'd just kind of be wasting my time if I tried to flush out, you know, tons of stuff here. So this is something that you'll want to do specific to your uh, brewery needs. But it should be pretty easy to get up and running because of the Docker image that you can just run uh, on any machine and you have all this stuff set up, ready to go. Uh, then all you need to do is build and install the firmware, which there's a batch file for if you're on Windows. Um, if you're on some other operating system, I think you can just look at the batch file and kind of use that as a reference for what commands to run to, to get the firmware up and running. Uh, one caveat currently is the firmware only runs on ESP32 devices. Uh, this was mainly just to save myself some time. Uh, if there's sufficient demand for running on other devices like a Mega, um, we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes, see how much interest there is, and then you know I, I can look at making a, a firmware version for that as well. Uh, I wouldn't recommend running a, trying to run it on anything besides an ESP32. At this point, you're pretty much guaranteed to run into problems, so... Uh, just don't do it. So with that said, that's probably a good place to to stop. Uh, hope some people are excited over this. Uh, let me know what you think. There's on the GitHub page. There's you know places to uh, file issues. There's I think I set a forum up already. If I didn't, I will. Um, but yeah, I'm brewing with this software on my own system already. I'm, I'm sure there are some firmware bugs that I haven't found yet, but I've tried to make it pretty robust. You know, for instance, like if, if there's a Wi-Fi failure, the firmware will just shut everything off so that things don't get out of control. Um, you know, might be some state synchronization issues kind of still floating around in there, but... Give it a shot. Let me know if you run into any bugs and follow them on the GitHub page. And uh, yeah, happy brewing.